haven't seen anything like this in Serbia. If you are brand new here, my name is Wando. I've been living in the Balkans since 2017. Four of those years have been in Serbia and I have been dying for the longest time to come to Novi Pazar. It's Serbia's major Muslim city. It's also the home of the Bosnian diaspora who are known as Bosniaks. Actually, it's pronounced Bosniak, not Bosniak. Apparently I've been saying that wrong for years. Please forgive me. And I'm just so excited to be here. So basically, I thought I would take you guys along a day of getting to know the city better. <laughs> Everything from the food to the culture. Right now, we are walking down the main pedestrian road, which is called 28 November Street. Living in Novi Pazar. It's been good. It's a small city and something. I don't know. We know everything here. Everyone knows. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah, like that. It's a small city. Cool. Bala. You know everyone, like. <laughs> I asked those boys like if it's okay if I'm wearing a skirt because I'm seeing a lot of women in abaya dresses and feeling like I'm being culturally inappropriate and they said it's fine. Okay, so right now I'm at Trg Isa no. <laughs> right now I'm at Trg Gazi Isabek Isakovic. Basically this is the center square to say that first and it was named after the founder of Novi Pazar. Uh, so he founded Novi Pazar in 1461. He was also the founder of Sarajevo. He was a general and governor in the 15th century over the Sanjak of Bosnia, which basically means historically an administrative district within the Ottoman Empire. Basically, as you see here, there's this fountain, or Sebil, and there's also a very similar one in Sarajevo. So if I'm going to give my first impressions of Novi Pazar, um, it feels nothing like the rest of Serbia. Like it's actually quite a lot of culture shock because the rest of Serbia is super orthodox. Here everything's quite conservative. There's lots of um, women in hijabs and abaya dresses and burkas. So it's super conservative. I'm hearing a lot of the call to prayer. Like I haven't seen anything like this in Serbia. Novi Pazar has a really interesting history. From the 15th century up to the Balkan Wars, it was the capital of the Sanjak of Novi Pazar. And so it was very multi-ethnic with Albanians, Serbs, other Slavic speaking Muslims, and even Jews all the way up to World War II. It gets its name Novi Pazar, which means new marketplace from during the Ottoman Empire period where it was a major administrative center and hub for merchants and lots of trade. And at the time, it was the new marketplace compared to a nearby neighboring older marketplace. The city is full of the most storybook fairy tale looking bridges as well as being littered with historic buildings from various centuries and many customs that have lived on throughout those centuries. One of them that I had to experience is Kafa Najaru, which means coffee on the grill at Teferic Cafe, which has been in operation for half a century. Kafa Najaru is coffee prepared just like the days where there was no electricity, when a coffee pot had to be slowly roasted on hot embers. <music> So I'm having a first kappa na jaru. I'm, I'm curious if this actually tastes different. I'm not a big coffee drinker and I don't have a great taste palette, so I don't know if it should taste different, but it does taste a little bit more bitter and heavy, I guess, but I just think it's cool that I'm having a different cultural experience. <laughs> I 
Okay, so right now I'm standing in front of Alton Alam Mosque. It was built in the 16th century by the great Balkan builder Musli Houdin Abdulgani. He built a lot of uh, structures in the Balkans. And there's a really cool legend that's associated with this mosque. So basically there was this girl at the time, her name was Altuna. The mosque is named after her. And basically she was so beautiful that everyone in the area was so intimidated by her beauty that no one like could gather the courage to actually propose to her. And so she basically experienced eternal solitude, which is so sad. But basically when she got to old age, she had accumulated all this wealth, she came from a wealthy family, and so basically she used all the leftover wealth to build this mosque. And that is the story of Altuna Alam Mosque and Altuna. I don't know if that's true, but whatever. <laughs> also, this street is a really historic street. It's called Prvo Majska Ulica, that means the first of May street, and it's a really historic street because um, it used to be known as Constantinople Road during the Ottoman Empire because this road actually from that time you could um, travel from Istanbul to Thessaloniki in Greece from Thessaloniki to Skopje in Macedonia from Skopje to here in Novi Pazar to Dubrovnik to Sarajevo so that's why historically the street is so important because merchants and travelers who were going all the way from uh, Istanbul all the way to Dubrovnik, the Adriatic Sea, uh, to Sarajevo, they were traveling through this street. It was filled with inns and caravans and so many merchants, so it's really, really surreal to be standing here right now. Okay, so we're coming to the famous Vrbak Hotel. You can't come to Novi Pazar and not take a picture of this hotel. Right now, I'm at the Novi Pazar Fortress. It was built in the 15th century. So it was built at the same time that the city was being built by the governor, Isakovic. But it's kind of unfortunate because this fortress went, underwent so many attacks throughout the centuries during the Balkan Wars, during World War II, and so a lot of the components of the fortress are no longer here today. But you will still see the uh, fortress walls. There's also the tower in the back there. So those are still here today. Um, and also there's a nice view of the Raska River. So behind me, <laughs> behind me is Amir Agin Han. It's basically an inn that's believed to have existed since the 17th century. Um, and it's one of only two inns that's been preserved by the city here. Basically in the 17th century during the Ottoman Empire period, traveling merchants would come to Novi Pazar to sell goods and caravans would come through here. There'd be massive markets here, hence the name Novi Pazar, which means new market. <laughs> and right now, I think it's like a cafe, so I'm actually just gonna go check it out. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I made an Instagram story about being in Novi Pazar and I never received so many messages telling me that I have to either eat chavati or mantie. <laughs> mantie, I've never had this before, so here I am. I'm trying it for the first time. It's just this dough. Anyway. Okay, so I'm 
my opinion, it tastes exactly like Borek, which is a common pastry basically in every country in the Balkans. It's basically like a fried dough and it's flaky. When you chew it, it kind of cracks and crumbles in your mouth. It tastes pretty much the same as that. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately I wasn't able to finish the video vlog style because it kept raining and I still have six more things that I want to share about the amazing Novi Pazar um, but yeah basically I went to Novi Pazar on a weekend and that weekend it kept raining I basically filmed whenever there was some clear weather and then it would rain again I ended up staying another week and I have to work during the week, so I can't film the video during the week. I just don't have time. And of course, the whole week, it's so clear. The weather is beautiful. And it gets to the weekend again, and it's raining. <sighs> but there's still six more things that I wanted to share about Novi Pazar. So the first thing is Novi Pazar has so many mosques, way more than the one that I showed you, Altun Alam. But in my opinion, the most beautiful mosque that I saw is called Svoj Borska Mosque. I would see it whenever I would walk to the grocery store. Um, when I was planning my trip to Novi Pazar, I didn't see any information about this mosque. I see that there's a lot of conflicting information online about it. Some say it was constructed in the 15th century, some say in the 16th century. And then as you can see, underwent you know, some renovations, which is why it's so opulent and beautiful looking. And that's also because it sits adjacent to this bridge that overlooks the river, which brings me to the second thing, which is that there's a very long river promenade. I only got a few shots of it, but I would go running there um, a few times a week. And it's so beautiful, especially when you get to the part of it where there's not as many commercial buildings around it. It's just some houses. So unfortunately, I didn't get to film more of it, but it's so beautiful. Number three, alcohol. So being a predominantly Muslim city, most restaurants and bars do not serve alcohol. And most grocery stores, the little kind of mom and pop type grocery stores don't, ser uh, don't sell alcohol. The bigger grocery stores do, um, the big chains in Serbia, so that's Maxi, Idea, Lidl, they sell alcohol. And then for restaurants, there's restaurants that you will find that serve alcohol. You can ask around and um, people will tell you. But I'll link to the bars, restaurants, grocery stores that I can think of that I learned about that sell alcohol. So four is Manastir Djurjevi Stupovi. So this is a monastery I really, really wanted to go to. It's about 10 minutes driving. Uh, outside of the center. Also, a number of people told me that if you go there in that general vicinity, there's a great view that overlooks the city and it's a great place to go at sunset. Five is the most happening street and that is Stevana Nemanje. So that's the street that I went to to go to Mama Mantia to eat those mantie. <laughs> and um, yeah, that street has like a bajillion bars restaurants at night it's where to be if you want to go smoke shisha go to hookah bars uh, go to some places where dj's playing stuff like that some happening bars that brings me to the sixth and final thing which is that i hate using this term but it feels very off the beaten path <laughs> it truly felt like when I traveled to the Balkans for the first time in 2015 and a lot of places, like even major cities at that point in all of the countries were, were still kind of under touristy. Naturally, it is hard to find places that aren't saturated with tourists and there's nothing wrong with places that have lots of tourists. I'm happy that major cities in Serbia like Belgrade like Novi Sad are receiving more tourism. You know, that's great for the economy. Um, that's great for people learning more about Serbia and wherever else in the Balkans, because I feel like this has been a region that's been so misunderstood for a long time. So it's a great thing. But I feel like if you want that experience of traveling to a place where you really feel like the culture and society is 
pretty undisturbed by tourism. Nobi Pazar is your guy. <laughs> um, I just think the people there are so inquisitive and curious. A lot of people clearly never met a black person before. So a lot of people would come up to me and ask me to take a picture with them or conversely, a lot of people would ask me to take a picture of them. Like a lot of little kids and um, teenagers would ask me like, hey, can you take a picture of me? I guess because I have a nice camera. So maybe they thought I was a photographer or a videographer or something. But I thought, I thought that was so cute. I met so many like amazing women who were so nice enough to like just randomly start talking to me and as we started talking they were gracious enough to answer questions that I had about um, being Muslim what it's like being Muslim in Serbia which is like predominantly Orthodox country um, being quite vulnerable about their experiences in a very religious section of Serbia, like a, a more kind of conservative religious section, I should say. And yeah, I just learned a lot. So it, it just was so different and truly culture shocking compared to the rest of Serbia, the rest of other places I've been to in, in the Balkans. So that was pretty, pretty incredible. So I hope you guys liked this video. Please like it and comment below any questions you have um, or any suggestions that you have of what I should make a video about next. And yeah, those things really help my channel. <laughs> so please also share it, please. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.